Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Sakthivel. In this video, we are going to see an interesting video on how we can get started with developing a framework to automate web, mobile and API. I am also going to have this framework integrated with the database. So because most of, most of the cases in real world, we would be interacting with the database and most of the people doesn't even know how to do the proper interaction with the database. They don't know what is a singleton pattern. Uh, what are the problems if you don't use a singleton pattern? So I try to collate all my knowledge together into one single playlist. And this is that particular playlist and that particular close. So if you are someone who is a nested, who wants to develop your coding skills, want to know how real time, you know, a framework looks like, you know, this is going to be the course for you. So we, this is a part one. And this part one, we're going to, uh, see about the features and the libraries of this particular framework. Uh, yeah, without wasting much time. So these are all the typical libraries that we're going to use. We're going to use Selenium for web automation, APM for mobile automation, REST issued for the API test as well as we're going to use it as a HTTP client if you want to generate some test data or we want to fetch some values and all that. We're going to use REST issued for that. Uh, we're going to use TestNG as the unit testing framework, extend reports for the reporting, and we're going to use Lumbach we already covered this in detail. Uh, if you haven't watched my Estet Essentials playlist, I will leave that in the description. Please do watch that because I almost covered all of these libraries there. So again, if you, if you haven't watched any of that, hopefully while doing the framework development, you should be in a position to understand them. If not, you have to go and watch that particular video before understanding this. Good, we're gonna use owner library for the configuration files management. We're gonna, it's gonna help us with a lot of things, right? It's gonna make us to write very less amount of code. Uh, it's gonna help us to handle multiple environments uh, with simple configurations and all that. We're gonna use Maven as the built and dependency management tool. We are also going to use SSJ for writing fluid sessions as well as we're gonna create a lot of custom sessions and make our tests more readable and understandable. SSJ is a brilliant, brilliant library. We'll cover that in detail as well. We uh, we also will cover about WebDriver Manager, which you might be quite aware of by this time because it's a widely used uh, library now. Uh, it's it, it helps to manage the browser binaries. Without this, our life would have been much much uh, you know uh, full of miseries, right? So so again, we're gonna use Jackson for the serialization and deserialization. Uh, we're gonna use availability uh, to to you know, if you want to have an async IP calls and all that, you know, try to use them into the Selenium and APM uh, space as well. Uh, we'll discuss that in detail as well. We will also learn about low exception to, you know, uh, you know, we already have a video on that, but we're going to use that in our code to, you know, handle the checked and unchecked exceptions. We're going to use data supplier, uh, which is a replacement for our data provider. Uh, how we can read from an external files like JSON, YAML, Excel, we're going to use data supplier. Right. And these are the high level features of this particular framework, which is, which is just high level. It's not limited to only these. If I think about anything that I want to integrate or you leave it in the description, if I have to uh, do something extra apart from something that's given here, please do leave it in the comment section. I'll check that out and I also made, make that happen. Right. So this uh, framework will have the capability to run the web test on local, remote, Selenium grid, Selenium grid, Docker containers hosted on cloud, wherever you name it, it should have the capability. So we're going to use open close principles so that if you want to add a new functionality, it's going to be very, very easy. I'm going to write my code in two different ways. One without using functional programming, then optimizing the existing code with the functional programming. And if you haven't watched my uh, series on functional programming, lambdas and streams, I have a separate playlist, please do watch them. We're going to have a our mobile tests running in the local Android emulator or real devices and also iOS simulators or, you know, I don't have an iOS device, but yeah, I can show it with the iOS uh, uh, simulators. And then uh, we are also going to run it on process track or P cloud or whatever the cloud platform, you name it, we'll do it. And then we'll also have clean code principles followed across the framework development. We want to follow single responsibility principle, design patterns, clean code practices, no, I have gone through Robert C. Martin's book multiple times. We had a lot of learnings from that. We're going to use all that. We're going to manage our page layers really well with the help of composition. A uh, lot of, lot of good things are coming in this framework. Please do check it out. And we're going to have the reportings. Uh, we'll also write some unit tests, which is very new uh, into the test automation. People normally don't write unit tests. We'll see the advantage of writing unit tests. We're going to integrate that with the GitHub action. So every pull request that you raise needs to come, you know, uh, satisfy this or 
pass this unit test in order for you to merge the code. So we're gonna do the integration with Jenkins. We're gonna do the database integrations with Singleton on all the good principles. We're gonna create a facade design pattern between your page layers as well as the database so that, you know, we're gonna do a lot of things guys, just believe me. And we're gonna do the code formatting because different people code format their code differently. But in, if when you're working in a team, we all need to follow some practice. We're gonna have a Megan plugin that wanna help us to do this task. We'll also learn about it. We'll also learn about GitHub action integrations, how we can replace Jenkins entirely and run our test within the GitHub itself. So if you are using an enterprise version of GitHub in your company, how we can replace the Jenkins, right? So, because normally these DevOps teams will be very busy, right? So let's let's remove the dependency from them and keep all our things within the GitHub itself. How, keep, how we can do that? We're gonna learn that. How we can host the extent report into the, you know, let's say you're, you're sending emails and all, that's fine, but let's just have a single place where I can go and see the report. Let's create a GitHub page for, for our extent reports to be published. We're gonna dockerize the test. We're gonna build a Docker image. We're gonna push it to the Docker registry with the help of the GitHub actions. You're gonna have Git secrets, Git encrypted secrets, and we're gonna write a proper readable readme file and a PR template file. So this is all that I could think of now, but you know, while creating or making the courses, I might think about something else. And I also include that feature. So please do check out this entire course. I hope you like it. I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, tada bye bye from Mumudan. Bye guys.